Hi there and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. This is A Country Life and this clip is being filmed, well, right now <laughs> in my time. Everything else that you see in this video is going to be back about a week or so. Uh, but the reason that I'm popping in here before we get started with the actual video is because clip 5310 is missing. Clip 5310 was the, vi was the clip where I introduced the entire video. And it's in clip 5310 where I talk to you about Molly sending me in this recipe for a sourdough bread that is made in a bread machine. And I walk you through the process of that and getting the ingredients in. And I think I talked all kinds of information about sourdough and just kind of how how that's been going. If you've been watching my videos, you know how it's going. It always gets eaten, but I still feel like I have this picture in my mind of what it should look like, and it hasn't been looking like that. Anyway, in today's video, uh, when the actual video, right, gets started, all of a sudden, I'm just going to be pulling the dough out of the bread machine, and I just wanted to give you that little update. So I will share the one pound sourdough recipe in the description box below. Molly sent it to me and I am going to share that in the description box for you guys. So if you want to make a sourdough bread in the bread machine, um, it uses yeast as well, not just the natural yeast. You use actually like, you know, granulated or what do they call that? Granulated yeast? Maybe that's what it's called, just the yeast in a jar. <laughs> All right, well, Anyway, I just wanted to jump on here first just to kind of get that out of the way for you guys so that when the video starts up, you're not like, wait a minute, what, what is going on? So that is what happened. I lost a clip and I had to kind of explain it to you. Today's video also is sponsored by Solite. So in a little bit, you're going to see uh, a clip that I'm filming today uh, where I am making iced coffee although I am freezing cold, but I was ma I'm making some iced coffee and I'm using a Solite product. So stick around for the Solite product, which will be in just a couple minutes. It is an hour and I think, yes, an hour and 30 minutes later, the bread machine just beeped here uh, and life is just going on here. Maria's working on Hunter Safety. She has her first class tonight. Uh, Joe is playing. I have been making phone calls, trying to get through. We have to choose a new dentist, and so I've been trying to get through on that. Um, I'm having logos printed on a tote bag, so working on that project and just all kinds of things. Laundry and just all of the things. You guys know how that goes, but here is what the bread looks like. Remember, this was a very small uh, loaf. I was only doing the small loaf, which I think was the one pound, and it is a really nice squishy dough. Hey, Mama. Mm -hmm. I want to put it in front. Where'd you get dough? This is a new way that I'm trying a sourdough. Interesting. So it uses sourdough, but it also use, uses yeast. It's warm. Yeah. It's warm. Mm -hmm. oh, don't. What are you doing? I am just treating this basically like regular bread dough. I'm going to cover this, set it on top of the stove here, and let it rise until it's 10 to 10. We're going to let this rise for probably an hour. We'll see how it goes and then bake it. 
Today's video is sponsored by Solite, and I am sharing with you their flip cap lid with handle for both wide and regular mouth mason jars. It has become very popular to utilize mason jars in our day-to-day -day kitchen life, not only for canning, um, but for just so many other things. I keep maple syrup in a jar, I keep iced coffee in a jar. I will make iced tea in my mason jars. That's not what this is about though. <laughs> what it's about is the fact that when I want to pour something from my mason jar, um, it is really nice to have a handle, especially if kids are using these or maybe your uh, hand strength is weakening as you age. It's just so nice to have a handle and that is where Solite helps out. These lids are completely leak proof and airtight. They are BPA free, PVC free. They are dishwasher safe. I know so many of you love your dishwasher <laughs> and want me to have one too. I'm happy without mine. Um, but anyway, these are dishwasher safe. They're durable, they're sturdy, and the ergonomic handle really does make it easy for holding and for pouring. And I have especially been pleased that the flip cap does not fall down when pouring because how annoying is it to have that cap flip down while you're pouring and then it ends up making a mess anyway. Turn any mason jar into a pitcher for easily pouring your coffee, juice, and really anything else. So Light has offered me a discount code for you, so please check the description box for that link as well as the code to get the best deal on the So Light flip cap lid with handle. Now, they have a lot of other products, so when you click that link, feel free to click around in their store to see all of their other mason jar accessories. Thanks to Solite for sponsoring today's video. Maria is making some hot chocolate in the background and I had to laugh because she's like, do we have any whipped cream? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And she pulls out a container of Cool Whip. I'm like, yeah, see we have, or she goes, I see some Cool Whip or a Cool Whip container, but is it really Cool Whip or is it something else? <laughs> everybody, everybody knows that around here, you never know what you're gonna get. You open up a cottage cheese container and it might be leftover chili. I am going to preheat the oven at this point. Since this is only a one pound loaf, I don't think it's probably gonna, you know, I don't think it's gonna get super, super high. Like, you know, a lot of times I would do a two pound loaf. That's gonna really puff up above the edge of the pan. So I'm gonna preheat the oven right now, 350 degrees, and I'll put this in and I'll just watch it. Maybe 25, 30 minutes that I should score this. I don't think that I should because the recipe is meant for the bread machine to actually bake it all the way through. Well, maybe I should read the recipe one more time. No, no, no. I know it doesn't. I read the recipe already <laughs> now that I think about it. So there would be no scoring since it would be normally in the bread machine and you could bake it all the way to finish in there. Uh, so I, that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to leave this covered. Let me just show you a little trick that I sometimes do. So it's not real warm in the house right now. It's only 60 degrees outside. Um, and yeah, it's not real super, super warm in the house. So since I have my crock pot on low over here, what I did is I put my loaf pan here. And then when I covered it, I put the towel over the handle of a crock pot so the heat that would come off of the crock pot down there would kind of go under the towel and warm up the bread to help it rise a little bit better. I have uh, potato soup. This is Amber's creamy potato soup in and that is from cookbook number one. I actually made it with when Maria and I did our grocery shopping for this meal plan I I didn't even have the potatoes on the list uh, which would be two two pound bags, or I think they're like 28 ounces now or something, bags of the little square hash brown, frozen hash brown cubes. And so I had potatoes in the pantry and so that's what I did. 
So I just put these in on high yesterday because I really, really wanted those potatoes to cook down so they were soft enough so I could kind of start mashing them. And then actually what worked the best for mashing is the back of this spoon. So I just would I just pushed it up against the side. Um, oh, I don't know, I probably did that for six or seven minutes uh, once they were cooked and that really mashed uh, a lot of the pieces of potato. So you got kind of that creamy cooked down uh, texture, which would be normal for when I use the hash brown squares. Those cook down a lot easier and get kind of like creamy and mushy a lot easier than fresh potatoes. Anyway, that worked out really well. Everybody ate it, but we didn't eat supper until eight o'clock last night because it took a long time for it to cook. So if you are gonna use fresh potatoes, definitely leave yourself lots and lots of time. We were fine because I baked banana bread, which is actually gone already. I baked uh, like one recipe, but I put it in two small loaf pans. One was eaten immediately in like that hour uh, as everybody was waiting and waiting and waiting for the soup to be done. And then the other one got finished off here this morning. Uh, the harvest crew came in because they had to wait for Warren to take in a semi. And they came in and so I just peeled up some, or sliced up some apples, Peter thawed some goose jerky, and I sliced up the rest of the banana bread and that was all gone within a couple of minutes. So that is uh, kind of what is happening here. I'm gonna wait for this to preheat. We're gonna get that bread in. Is so disgusting. <laughs> My garbage can. <laughs> okay, I guess brushing his teeth is disgusting. Well, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go make that happen, uh, and then he is going to be working on some schoolwork here, and we we're gonna work on that for about 45 minutes together. I am going to get some 50% off chicken thighs. So yesterday we ran in to get milk, and this was the last package of 50% off. It is sell by today's date. And so I'm going to get this all, I'm going to pull the skin off of these chicken thighs and get these all into my Instant Pot, get them cooking down because they need to have enough time to cool because tonight for supper, the next thing on Maria's meal plan is chicken fried rice. And so we're going to peel this all off the bone and then shred it up and use it for chicken fried rice tonight. If you are, oh, there's my timer. If you are brand new to my channel, I just wanted to give you guys a look at the Amber's Creamy Potato Soup. That is going to be Joe's. <laughs> Do you want a spoon? Yeah. Okay, they're right here. This is a staple for us through the fall and winter months. It's just one of our absolute favorites. And we call it Amber's Creamy Potato Soup because when Amber lived at home, she is, she's an adult now, but when she lived at home, she loved to find recipes for me and she'd be like mom do you think you could make this and this is one of the recipes that she ran across and it has just been made ever since then so that's why we call it amber's creamy potato soup and it is in cookbook number one also let me see and here is the recipe feel free to screenshot that and zoom it in if you need to otherwise there will be a link in the description box if you want to purchase the cookbook and this was in for 30 minutes at 350. And I would say that that's done. We're gonna let that cool for a little bit before slicing into it. So I guess today has just been all about the food. We are wrapping up the last little bits of potato soup. And I did wanna show you the like bread machine. I'm just gonna call this bread machine sourdough. Or maybe we'll call it sourdough sandwich bread. Maybe that would be a better word for it too, um, or a better name for it. Anyway, this is what we have left here after lunch. Um, I was just cutting the heel here for Warren. Him and Maria have to leave for hunter safety. And so, yeah, they, they need to leave in, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes or so. So they need to get going on theirs. Maria's having a sandwich. I just kind of pulled out some fixings for lunch meat sandwiches. Um, maybe someone's going to make themselves a package of ramen. We'll see. But that's kind of basically how things are going. This is very, very good. Warren actually called this sourdough light before because it has a very, very light sourdough flavor to it. Uh, you know, so if you're not really into it being real strong or you don't like that super crusty bread, super hard crust, this would be what you would want to do. It's got just a nice soft crust, very good crumb. It's pretty late here now. Well, later than I normally bake, at least in the last like 15 years. I used to, when our 
um, oldest kids were little, I would usually start baking around 8 or 8.30 at night, and that was when I would do almost all of my baking, cookies and breads and brownies and just all of the things. Oh, I don't really like to do that too much anymore. <laughs> okay, so anyway, but I am because we just don't, I haven't really been buying a ton of snack, snack foods, granola bars, fruit snacks, chips. I mean, I have, but I haven't at the same time. Okay, anyway, I'm making some muffins here and I'm gonna do part blueberry, part cranberry. And the recipe that I'm using is the recipe I just used. I'm, I'm pretty sure I just showed that I made these not too long ago. Uh, this is from cookbook number two on page 46. And this is the blueberry muffin recipe. Let me get better lighting. It's weird lighting this time of night. But that's the recipe I'm using. And I finally found my Danish whisk. I had bought one. Mm, I want to say it had to have been like last winter. Maybe not. Maybe the spring. And then it ended up getting put in a tote bag and I was cleaning out stuff by my desk the other day and I was like, oh, there it went. <laughs> I had wondered, I thought maybe it accidentally got put in a bag that ended up back at Good, or ended up at Goodwill. And I was like, oh shoot. But anyway, I found it and so I've been using it here and it actually works amazingly well. Okay, I also had fed my sourdough before and it was puffed up okay. It was kind of active. So I just poured in uh, a bunch of that. And I'm actually seeing some bubbles here uh, forming in here. So that's that's a good thing too. All right. Well, I'm going to get half blueberries, half cranberries put into here, get these in the muffin uh, tin and get them baking here so that at some point we can settle down for the evening. back from our first homeschool co-op afternoon of the year of the school year I am making supper Warren and Maria have to get out the door in a half an hour I'm a little bit concerned that I'm actually not gonna be able to get this finished and what am I gonna do for them I'm not hundred percent sure here yet but anyway I may have to give it to them on the go I am making chicken fried rice I just stripped the meat off of the bones of all of the chicken that I cooked down in the Instant Pot yesterday. And now what I have going here today, this, I'm, I'm actually doubling the recipe because we love to have leftovers of this. And I have this set on about six, about medium to medium high heat. And I'm just gonna let this rice brown for a little bit. If you keep watch, you can turn the heat up and make it happen faster. I did not double the oil. I only doubled the rice. And I am going to turn this up because the goal is to make this happen. I want them to be able to eat before going out the door. I'm just going to get all of the other ingredients out and ready to go so I can be quick, quick, quick. It only took a couple of minutes to get the rice to brown because I kept it on a nice high heat today. I'm adding in the water. So sometimes if I am in a hurry, I will put the oh, uh, vegetables right in when I put in the water Mom. and the, uh, or, or the chicken broth. I'll put it in the, right away. Uh, yes, uh. that goes on the Instant Pot, which is over there in the closet. Uh, and so, so that's what I did today. I also, do not have a green pepper. I have some frozen already diced in the basement, but I'm not gonna go down there and dig through the freezer because I'm short on time right now. So it's just celery and onion today. And I put the celery and onion already in here with the rice and the water 
and, or sorry, the chicken broth. I also just put a whole bunch of soy sauce and we're gonna do a little extra salt. And I'm gonna put the camera down and we're gonna do some pepper. And that's just because it's not part of the recipe, but I just like to add pepper to just about everything. <laughs> already sliced up the lettuce so you really only need like two cups uh, one cup if you're making a, a single recipe so this looks to be about two cups probably a little more we really like the lettuce in it uh, so if I have a lot of lettuce I will put a lot in it because it tastes really good I also am going to crack four eggs I'm just gonna crack them in the same container that I had the chicken broth in and get those whisked up to add at the very end I added the chicken in in the last few minutes of the water being absorbed in the rice and just waiting for that to get hot. I just moved all of the rice mixture over. I poured in the egg. I'm going to let that cook until it sets up. We'll stir that in and then stir in the lettuce and it'll be time to serve this up to eat. The egg usually sticks pretty bad. That's just what that's been my experience. I suppose maybe if I had used a non-stick but this is the pan that barely fits the amount that I like to make. So this is the pan I use, and yes, it sticks. I turned off the heat now. I'm just gonna stir in the egg. While we stir that in, let's just put the lettuce in as well so the lettuce can wilt down. And I'm gonna get this stirred. I had to put a little container together for Warren and Maria and a couple of plastic forks. And Maria might eat on her way, and then they had to get there a little early today to hunter safety because they're going to be doing climbing deer stands and I also think fence crossing as well. Safe fence crossing with a firearm. So anyway, they were asked to get there a little early today because they have a very big class and the instructors were a little concerned that they might be not be able to get through everything that they have to get through tonight in just three hours. So he said, if you guys could get here 15 minutes early, that would be really great. And so that is why <laughs> they are eating on the go. Okay, I've gotten this stirred up pretty good. It is hot. I'm going to call the rest of the family to the table and we are gonna eat and there's gonna be a lot of leftovers for tomorrow and that is gonna be so fantastic. Well, tonight we are continuing through Maria's meal plan that she made. She did have, have the help of a couple of her brothers. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure, Maria, was this one of your meals? Waffles and bacon? Okay, so waffles and bacon. I'm also going to do some fried eggs along with this, uh, just so we have a, a big enough variety for this meal. And I am using the waffles recipe from cookbook number one. This is the last recipe in like the main dishes section. I put all the breakfast things right at the end. So we have biscuits and gravy, we have breakfast hash, and then we have waffles. So the waffle recipe here, I'm making a full batch tonight. There's six of us home for supper. And then I also put the bacon is in the oven. So just 350 degrees for about 30 minutes, plus or minus, really just kind of depending on how chewy or uh, crispy you want your bacon or how thick it is, that kind of thing. 